Previously on Historical Geocaching, my dad and I are visiting New Echota State Historic Site in Calhoun, Georgia, the site of where the Cherokee Nation had their capital back in the 1820s. Most recently, we visited the print shop and learned about Sequoia, Elias Buena, and the Cherokee Phoenix newspaper. We are also midway through a fascinating demonstration of how the printing press back then worked. Typesetting was pretty slow, and there was a lot of labor involved. The but they did a lot of it here because everything that got printed had to be set in type before you could print it. Nowadays, you have computers and typewriters, and you, have, you can talk to your computer and get a type for you, and you can go ahead and make a print from it. Back then, it was all done by hand. So, once you build up for the column, two inches worth of your composing stick, tie a string around it, and you slit it and you compose the stick here onto the gap. It's a small fourth drawer. And they have shelves. There's some of the shelves for the job cases and the shelves for the galleys to be. And they number them A1 through A10, B1 through A10. And the editor would keep track of which article was on which gallons. It usually took two or three gallons. His editorial might be on gallons A1 through A3. And he would keep track of it. And he wanted to break the paper to get the right galleys out, slide the top off onto the table, and they put an iron frame, like a picture frame, on it. They used wood to space everything out, and tighten it down with these coins, and they put it over here in the press. And this is my metal case going around. And these are my pieces of wood to space it out. And I got my wood, it's called furniture, from over there on that wall. And you see, I've got different widths. And at the top are short ones and at the bottom are real long ones. So I pick out just the side I need and put it all together here. So I can lift that chase up, put it in the press, lock it up and get it ready. So we've set the time. We've got it locked up in the press. It's all sturdy, ready to go. We have to ink it every time we print the top. So the way the ink is had to ink it, they had two things called ink balls. Now the Indians didn't have a fancy car wooden handle. They had a gear bike. We threw old socks and rags in it. And they fold the corners up and they sewed it with a long high shoelace. And it looked like a softball with a pants cuff on it. Okay? And you couldn't play ball with it. It's soft, it's got rags inside. They made a tool. Because you dipped ink out of the can, smeared it on an ink ball, and then you had to do what was called beating the ink. So you took the two ink balls and you beat them together. And you rub them and you smeared the ink. Mixing it all together and smearing a light coating all over the damn gear hide. Then you have to take the gear hide that had ink on it and block. And when you were done with that, you had to get some more ink on it and block some more. And then you had to beat the two ink balls together and block some more. And then you had to beat the two ink balls together and block some more. Boy, it was a really long and hard process. So it was the best they could do back then. That's all they had. So they did the best they could. By 1880, printers got a rollers. And once we got one rollers, we never used an ink ball again. Watch this. I've got a flat piece of rock here, stone, and I dip some ink out of it. I take my roller and I evenly coat my roller with ink. And now I can roll it over thousands of pieces of time. And I don't over ink, under ink. And then put the coat in every piece of time. And it's so much easier, so much faster, and it does a better job. So printers never went back to ink balls after they did everything with that. They wrote. Then, they register the paper to the form. Now comes the fun part. This thing here, this iron frame, is called a tempo. When I close this down on my paper, it traps it. So now the wind can't blow it off the press or miss it, register it. And this is where you guys can help. Why don't the two of you come on over this way? Because these 
shorter. The landing come up close here. You can come on this side. This gets cranked in. So you have to pick that up and keep cranking to this part that's all the way under there. Just keep pushing. Can't go too far. It's got a metal stop. Boom. Okay. Now, I'm going to push this impression up and pull it here. You don't want to get too close here because that's got grease and dirt on it. So you don't want to leave this. You're going to grab with your two hands on it. You're going to pull while I push. Okay? Now, this press was made in 1970. It's 145 years old. It's pretty worn out. So I moved my paint a little bit. I give it a second impression. So we're going to have to do this again. Alright. Now, who wants to crank it all the way out? was used. Um, a little history, yeah, because I came in down the middle of the presentation, but a little history that I can fill you in on is that um, this was where, maybe children was where the Cherokee Indians um, produced their newspaper called the Cherokee Phoenix. It was the very first um, newspaper produced by Indians and for Indians. Um, editor was a guy by the name of Elias Budenot. Um You might have heard the I mentioned his name, very educated, um, Indian, and what I thought was interesting, I was reading a book recently, Elias Buenat was in his early 20s when he was given the editorship of the Cherokee Phoenix, so just like, wow, I mean, a guy my age having the influence and the responsibility and the privilege of guiding the main communication device of an entire nation. That's just really, really cool. Really interesting history. Um, and yeah, the Cherokee Phoenix was uh, one of the main ways to help keep everyone informed and solidify opinions. Um, although they also debated opinions in there, as everyone would. But anyway, really interesting history. Let's go see what else we, cool stuff we can learn here at Nui Choda State Historic Site. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed learning some more amazing American history. If you like this kind of stuff, be sure to check out the annotations on the screen for more of my videos. And if you haven't hit that big red subscribe button yet, please do so now as I publish new videos each and every week on Wednesdays. As always, this is History Buff TN Photobuck signing out, and I am indeed having a blast with the past.